Well, okay, the lighting is bad. If you guys are wondering why I have my hand up like this, it's because I'm using it to block the light. Because if I have, if I move my hand, you're gonna see this big glare of light and it just doesn't look good. So I'm just gonna do that so it, things look kind of better. But anyways, what's up guys? My name, my name is Nicole and welcome to Nicole Topics. And today's topic is off ice or fitness or working out or whatever category of being fit fits into. And yeah, this video is gonna be pretty different compared to a lot of my videos in this channel but as you guys saw in the title today i'm gonna show you guys an ultra beginner off ice routine and yeah let's just get started right into this video this is kind of better actually so um before we actually start working out though let's just go through the basics of like what you need for this workout and then you really don't need much but first off if you are a girl and have long or medium hair like this um i strongly suggest you tie it up and just pull your hair back so what i would do is quickly tie my hair up into a ponytail another thing i recommend is that you guys wear something flexible so for a top um you can wear any top it doesn't have to be long sleeves the only reason i'm wearing long sleeves is because it's cold outside basically just wear any shirt that you would wear as if you're going outside and for pants you can either wear shorts or leggings slash athletic pants so right here i'm just wearing some galaxy leggings and socks are highly recommended too i'm just going to be straight with you guys right now an ankle brace is optional but the reason why i'm wearing one is because my ankle has been acting up lately, so I'm wearing this to prevent injury because I have to skate in two days as I'm recording this. Also, I apologize if my voice sounds kind of weird. I am recovering from a cold, so. But yeah, after we got all of that down, let's just start working out. Hey guys, it's voiceover me. Um, another thing I forgot to cover is what to wear on your feet, so I highly suggest you guys wear tennis shoes or sneakers. Um, right here, I am wearing jazz shoes, which is a really good plan B if you're in a situation like me where you're not allowed to wear any sneakers inside the house. So, yeah. The reason I believe jazz shoes is a perfect plan B is because even though jazz shoes are not as thick as sneakers, they still offer some sort of protection on your feet during a workout. They also offer you more of a challenge for off ice as you go higher up in level. So that's also another like plus into the table. So the first thing we are gonna do here is get warmed up. So what we're about to do is we're gonna jump up in place for five times. But as we're doing this, we're gonna focus on a few things. The first thing I wanna talk about is the arms. So when we're gonna be jumping up and down, we're gonna have our hands on our hips. The next thing we're going to focus is on how we are going to jump up and down. This is very helpful because it can help prevent injury, especially if you are not used to doing something like this. So what I'm showing you guys with my feet is how you're not supposed to jump. This is how a lot of new skaters, including myself back then, would jump. And while a lot of new skaters do this, jumping like this in the long run, for off ice especially, is a bad idea and the reason i say this is because it can be very unforgiving to your ankle and your joints the way jumping like this would cause injury is because as you're jumping down you're putting so much force and impact to your ankle which would then explain why your ankle is sprained the next day after jumping like this this is how you want to jump though it's hard to describe what to do but as you guys see i'm basically just jumping up gradually from like the whole of my feet and the last part that's going to go up in the air is my toes and then i'll land first down with the toes and gradually go back down again and this basically breaks the impact a little bit it breaks the fall and it, it's just more safe to do and overall more forgiving on your ankles as you jump up too make sure your feet are parallel now that we know what to focus on let's just 
connect all of those and jump up five times now. Now that we're warmed up, let's move on to some stretching. Stretches we'll be doing here is straddle stretches and we're gonna hold each straddle for 30 seconds. The best way I keep track of time while stretching is using the alarm on my phone. While we're doing the stretch, we do want to like go as far down as we possibly can. What we need to remember is to not overstretch ourselves in the process while doing that too. So as we're stretching, let's talk for a moment, shall we? You guys are probably wondering, Nicole, what made you want to make this kind of video? Well, for the past few years, I've been part of the Yahoo Answers ice skating community, and then soon I transitioned to the ice skating amino community. And a question that I'll see a lot through those two skating forums is people who are starting to ice skate soon and they want to know an off-ice routine. And I think that's a good thing to ask because what's wrong with being prepared? But personally, I have a hard time answering this question because it's not like I can just go to their house and show them the workout. I have to like type that all down and it's just really hard for me to do that. Especially when it comes to describing what to focus on and how to really like do this and that. Honestly, if I were to ask that question back when I was 11 years old and starting out, I would love to have a video like this where it can just straightforwardly show me on what to do and plus I'm a visual learner so that really changes the game. Honestly, I might make a remake of this video one day or maybe a part 2 depending on the feedback. If any of you guys watching this are people who are about to start skating and looking for a off-ice routine like this, please comment down below of like what you're looking for in an off-ice routine specifically made for like beginners. Obviously, I try my best making this video, but it's also been a pretty long time since I was in those shoes, so comment down on your thoughts about this way i'll know what to add next time if i ever make a video like this again but yeah this video is made for people who are about to start ice skating so i try to add things that could help you guys in the future as you advance more and also give you a little bit of a sneak peek for what your first class might have to offer and teach you guys and you know just hope you guys be more prepared for your very first class. Okay, so when you're finished with your straddle stretches, you wanna bring your legs slowly back together. And what I usually do after I do a good straddle stretch is bring my legs close to me and try to untense those muscles. Now I'm going to show you guys some stuff that you're most likely going to be talking about during your first class or maybe few classes. I think a very important thing to talk about first is the arms. So in skating, there's two kinds of arms. You got the arms that are in together in the right side with the left hand under your right hand. And then you have something that I like to call airplane arms. And you're basically when both of your arms are out. The purpose of these two main arms is so you can keep balance. The arms you'll mostly use throughout skating is the arms in rather than the airplane arms. Although you will use the airplane arms a lot during the beginning, but you start seeing soon that you're going to use the airplane arms less as time goes on. Also, since everything is new and we're not going to do like a lot of crazy things during this kind of off ice, you don't have to strictly just put your arms in on the right side. You can have it in the middle if you want, but the only reason I'm just telling you guys this about how like the arms in have to be in like the right side and all is because these kind of arms are going to be used for jumps. Here's an example of me doing a jump. As you guys see, during when I'm in the air, you can see that both of my arms are in the right side together. Now that we talked a little bit about arms, let's put our hands around our hips again. And what we're going to do here is stand on both of our feet with our tippy toes for 15 seconds. And the purpose of this is to help gain balance. 
If you're wobbling out a lot or if you're falling out of the tippy toes, don't stop the time and restart again. Just keep going. You're going to gain that balance over time. Now we are basically going to do the same concept but with one foot and airplane arms. This will also be done for 15 seconds on both sides. Now the last thing we're going to do today is probably going to be one of the most important aspects of skating and that is falling, but falling properly. Now to fall properly, you want to gradually bend down your knees and have your arms out. Kind of like how you would go down for a dip. And when you're low enough, you want to touch your hands on the ice. And after you do that, you can just sit down on the ice. If you're practicing this in a hard floor like concrete or wood, I strongly suggest you have something soft down on the floor with you like a pillow. But yeah, falling like this definitely reduces impact on your body. Since if you bend low enough, the fall down to the ground won't be as hard. And with the hands on the ice first, it also breaks more impact. But yeah, to give you guys a better description, let me just show you guys quickly on what falling on the ice not doing this method would look like and how it could affect your body so you're skating you feel yourself losing balance and instead of falling while you still can you try to regain your balance and end up tripping and sure well that fall i just did may not look so bad but let's just analyze it because it's actually more painful than you might think so here I am falling and the first thing I land hard on is my knees. And since I'm still out of control, I'll then slam my hands hard on the ice to regain some balance. And after going through all that, I finally softly sit down on the ice. But if I were in that situation and safely fall, here's how things would be less painful. I'll squat low, touch my hands on the ground first while in that low position. Even though I did that a bit faster than I did the first time, there is less impact on my body. And less impact equals less pain, so win-win. But now let's talk about how to safely get up. So first thing you would want to do is put both of your hands on the ice. And you would want to put your dominant leg up and go into this pose as if you're getting ready to go to a race. We're going to use a dominant leg to help us hop right back up to the ice. And here we go. Now here's me doing the same thing, but faster. Whoa, okay, so yeah guys, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. And I'll see you next time. Bye.